Thank you so much for joining us and for being willing to share your experience as a professional female sportswoman. Um, one of the pillars of International Women's Day this year is applauding equality for women in sport. So we're really happy to have you here to speak about your experience in the sector. Um, I've been lucky enough to know Phoebe for many years since we were at university together, but would you like to introduce yourself to anyone watching and tell us a bit more about yourself? Of course, thank you for having me on. So I'm Phoebe Graham. I'm a professional cricketer for the Northern Diamonds and I've recently embarked this journey as a professional cricketer since the new year. Prior to that, I was a marketing lead at Sky Sports and managed Liverpool TV, Man United TV and their wholesale partners, Virgin and Vodafone. So it's been quite a transition over the past two, three months, but I'm absolutely loving it and being able to dedicate my time full time as an athlete feels an absolute privilege because I've been juggling sport, county cricket and career and work since I was probably 18, 19. Um, so yeah. And what led you to, um, to make the change into professional sport? So the start of 2020, the ECB invested £20 million into the women's game over the space of two years. And as part of that, there was 40 domestic contracts introduced into the game. So prior to that, only the England team were paid to play cricket um, and county players. So I played for Yorkshire, for Berkshire, for Devon. You just played for fun and played for the competition. So as soon as that announcement came out, I felt like there was something to work towards and I really shifted my focus and attention to cricket and trained as hard as I could. And I remember February last year ringing my mum saying, I think I want to be a professional cricketer and I think it's possible. So yeah, despite COVID, they still um, invest in the women's game and they um, gave out the 40 contracts November last year which was when I made the decision to be a professional cricketer. Brilliant. And how does that investment compare to the male, your male counterparts? Um, I guess to give a little bit of context, the men's game has always been professionalised. So England level, county level, and there's about 30 counties with 30 male contracted players where the salary starts at like 25k a year, say, and they progress upwards for the women's game, 10 years ago, England women pay, paid to play around the world. So they sacrificed everything to be an England cricketer. And then in 2014, so seven years ago, 18 female cricketers got the opportunity to be full-time professionals. And that was starting at 18,000 a year. Things have progressed now and changed, but that just gives some sort of context and scale in terms of the investment and change in comparison to the men's game. And so now there are 59 female professional contracted cricket players in the UK compared to probably about 400 male cricketers. So there's still a huge disparity gap and it's moving in the right way, which I think is really positive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which actually leads me on to my next question. Um, obviously, uh, it's important to highlight and challenge gender inequalities um, so that we can develop and uh, move in the right direction. Um, can you summarise, um, alongside the things you've already mentioned, um, the biggest obstacles that you faced as a woman in sport in your career thus far? I think one of the biggest um, obstacles has been opportunity. So the opportunity to train in full-time env environments and also having visual role models as a kid. So I think today in 2020, four to 10% of media coverage is female. And you can see that when you go on your BBC Sports app, your Sky Sports app, there isn't a lot of female content. But when you go back to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it probably would have been about 1% if that. So things are moving in the right direction, but the biggest barriers have been opportunities to train, which have only just come about this year for me at 29. And then also the visualization of role models and seeing role models in the workplace and in sport. And I think there's a huge shift here from my marketing career to my sports career, because in marketing, I was always inspired by role models at Johnson & Johnson, at Sky and aspirational female leaders. 
and there were systems and structures in place so that I could attend seven seminars and lectures to understand how to empower my voice, how to use my voice as a female and understand potential societal challenges that females face. In sport, I think we're a long way behind that and you can feel that you're a female entering a male environment despite the structure and investment that's come in. So there's still a long way to go, but it is moving in the right direction, which is really positive to see. Yeah, it's good to hear. And I think it goes nicely into um, the Choose to Challenge theme this year. Um, what are you, and that's the International Women's Day theme. Um, what are you choosing to challenge? And can you tell us about the projects that you're working on? Yeah, so my professional challenge is to be the best possible athlete. But my personal challenge is my, my new business, Tip and Flip, which is all around tipping and flipping perceptions of women's sport. So I think we're at the tipping point of really something special in women's sport. There's a lot more role models, a lot more audiences, but perceptions still need to be flipped in order to generate more people watching and playing the game. So I'm doing or trying to use my voice as much as possible, doing talks like this, but one of the my major challenges is I'm working as a marketing consultant for the Northern Diamonds and my number one challenge is to get female Northern Diamonds represented around the stadium. So on Friday I went round and took photos when as you walk into the stadium and my place of work now you see Joe Root, Johnny Bairstow, everyone plastered around the the, the um, walls, but there's no Catherine Brunt, who's been an international England player for 15 years, Lauren Winfield Hill, the Yorkshire and Northern Diamonds and Superchargers captain. So I'm working on that, and that is my number one challenge for this year within <laughs> Hip and Flip. <laughs> um, and finally, um, can you think of anything recently that you have uh, read or listened to? Um, that you would recommend on the subject of women in sport and empowerment um, that might be of interest to anyone watching? One of my favourite books is Untamed by Glennon Doyle and it really focuses on the individual challenges I've faced as a female in sport by thinking about the pressures of society and that society holds rather than doing what you want to do and through watching that book, listening to the podcast on how to fail, it really ignited something inside me to think, I want to play sport, this is what I'm going to do, despite being offered a different job at Sky that would have brought me a house and all the different societal things that feels right at this age. So that was something that's not directly linked to sport, but really, really empowered me as an individual to think differently. Brilliant. Well, that's a lovely, um, empowering and uplifting um, thought to finish on. So thank you so much, Phoebe, for all of your insights and your um, interesting um, things that you've shared with us. And best of luck with your project um, on the marketing and with Tiff and Flip. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Rosie. Thank you.